in a week where Frankel has been asked to perform three times in a week. We've got three people here that have asked to perform just once a week. That is too terrible. <laughs> you <laughs> cannot be allowed to get away with that, for goodness <laughs> sake. Oh, dear, oh, dear. I did. It's just before the watershed, yeah, John. say I only perform once a week, that is outrageous. <laughs> <laughs> um, good evening, first of all, to Billy Blakeman. Good evening, Peter. Um, our, our, our resident pundit, but he's here tonight to, to give a view on some of the outstanding issues uh, in the world of racing. Uh, mm -hmm. Good evening, Jeff. I think I feel like I should have a rubber suit sitting here between these two, you know, just uh, for absolutely. safety. I was going to say, Racing Post were covering the Best greys, but uh, yes, uh, they didn't mention you. Yeah. Uh, Best greys, <laughs> nothing grey about it. And, and good evening, John. Good evening, our fellow. Yes. G good evening. There's a lot to talk about, and we're going to go right to the front of the programme with a subject matter which we've covered before, but it's obviously in the industry papers and, and government uh, have attracted more attention to it, both on the Labour side and the Conservative side. That uh, fobty side of things. Anyone well, want to mention? Well, no, it's absolutely huge, isn't it? It was on the Daily Politics had it on. Uh, it was on BBC Breakfast program, PMQ's Prime Minister's Questions, a Labour Opposition Day motion that was debated for two hours in the House of Commons, and all over the place that the subject's been brought up. So it's a something's got to be talked about because you're kind of the Prime Minister who says that, uh, answering PMQs, answering Ed Miliband said there's problems in the gambling industry. The Prime Minister stands up and says that, we've got to reflect it and see where they're coming from. And I think we've got to get back to basics here. And I am sick to death of saying this to people. In the old days, in 1961, when betting shops opened, the only way you could bet was horse racing, greyhound racing, and the football pools. That's Why the only way you could now? now. So now, you can bet 24 hours a day, every second, roulette and poker and all the games and switch machines and everything. So what the Labour Party have done, have concentrated on just one small aspect of problem gambling. Now, there is a, a problem with compulsive gamblers. Of course there are. Same as there is compulsive drinkers, people who compulsively eat too much and are killing themselves, and I know what that um, affliction is like. So there is a problem. But they fixed on this one thing. So one of the questions you've got to ask is if they got rid of the fobs, um, the, the, the machines and all that sort of thing, what would be next? But the basic issue here is this is a matter of freedom. The people who go in the shops, they want to do it. They enjoy doing it. I've never played a fob in my life, but they enjoy doing it. Who are we to say that they shouldn't? This nanny state, this Jeff, Labour Jeff Party, Billy, who Jeff want Billy. to no. sort of stop no. and people enjoying themselves. No, 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I can't have this from Mr. Ladbrokes here, and it's even rich from the Labour Party as well who voted these things in. It was never, ever, at any point, the intention of the 2008 or 2007 Gambling Act to create 8,500 casinos in the high street. It was never the intention of the act, and that is the central problem. It's the central problem, in, and, and very much it's a problem for the big firms because they now have a they ha now have a huge PR problem to deal with, which they haven't yet addressed. Which is now the government is involved, the reaction groups are involved. There are there is the you know there's, there's this nonsense that's being that's being that's being put out there by people that are working for the big firms saying oh there's a 40 percent drop in ga in problem customers from 0.8% to 0.5%. You can't come out with figures like this. It, it makes a nonsense of any arguments when you, when you argue this Billy, way. Billy, Billy. Oh, well, no, I mean, you, what we've done is we, we've pulled a particularly small section of problem gamblers into the racing world. You know, we've, we've pulled in, as John says, people, if yeah. people want to problem gamble, they will problem gamble somewhere. We, we've managed to pull them into our betting shops and, and immerse them into We're the world We're going to come back to that racing. subject in a minute, but what I want to do is I want to go over to Twitter corner. Tom's waiting to take your tweets. What do you think? Do you think there's a massive problem? Let's go over to Tom. Uh, yeah, a few early tweets in about uh, fob tees and a few questions to throw at the panel. Um, first of all, Andrew Redshaw, and I don't know whether this, you've had a bit of bad luck on the odd fob tees, but he says these machines need investigating, as I don't think the percentage is what the bookmakers claim. Um, secondly, Pink Fairy Cher Cheryl Hanrahan uh, says, what's your opinion on, I won't mention, but a leading bookmaker's linking of managers' wages with the profits that fob tees are giving them in their shops? Well, I can only imagine there's certainly some correlation there, as there has been with every, every bookmaker on the street uh, taking big advantages from their fob tees. And the last one there is from uh, Bookie Punts Lay Bets. 
and they asked, asked Big Mac, is it right that you can fill up a fob tee with thousands of pounds worth but can't get a £50 bet on a horse? That's one that uh, Jeff Banks might want to take up for you as well. Back to you, Peter. I'm delighted. I'm delighted. Jeff, can I just make a point on that? Can I just make a point? There, and this happened in a Corals just down the road from there. It's in, it's in Warren Street. They had two £50 bets on Saturday, two losers. Well, then we're going to put a bet on £50 on Shotgun Paddy in a big handicap race that they actually won at 9-1. to one. No phone call was made, and he was told the maximum bet he could have in a coal shop was £25 we, we, pounds we've each way. We've all got stories like that. But the point is, you can go and put £1,000. We've all got stories like this. And the, the, the bottom line is that, I mean, corals, are, corals seem to be a particular villain in this department. Because I had the same story about, you know, a fellow sitting in a betting shop and watching somebody dump £300 to a shop. And somebody walks in there with an even £100 horse and he's told he's going to get absolutely nothing. We've all heard these stories. We don't know the truth of them, but, but there's no smoke well, without it's fire. It's definitely true. There's no true, smoke. Yes. And the guy One wrote thing, the ticket out. No, no. Yeah. There's the no smoke. The no question there is no yeah. smoke without fire. But it only goes to prove the point, the, the, the central point. One of, one, of, one of customers, punters, customers, central complaints is that the licensed betting offices have turned from the world of betting, mm. betting and sports betting and horse racing, mm. into gaming and this is the central point this is what Bruce Millington in his ridiculous column today was completely missing the point it's got nothing to do what but what betting shops used to be when my father described betting shops as a license to print money he was talking about betting he was talking about horse racing and how much money he made out of it not what we got these days it's a different world why is it? It was a monopoly virtually for horse racing. It was, it was greyhounds and football balls. The that's 2008 what, Gambling Act, John, that, the 2008 what, Gambling Act was an intention yeah. by the Labour government at that time to deal with the the likelihood of super casinos. Yes. Okay. That was what was going to happen. Let me, let me ask, in let me ask, let me ask Billy a question because I don't want to sit in the corner there. Yeah. Is it right that you should be outside a shop and someone entices you in to play a game? For free, and if you win, how do you mean entices? Go outside. Well, they, do, what, they, pull, they, pull, they have got. I've seen them be outside, John. Well, what, I, I've seen them go outside. What do they do? Come uh, in, play the machines. I've so, seen it happen. So an old lady about eighty is no, 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 no. no. What they do of, is what they shopping. what they do is to yeah. make you play the machines. Yeah. Is what they do is they bring a series of people in mm. to play it free of charge or current customers, and whoever mm. sort of gets the highest pot gets a free fifty pound go. Look. On the right. fob team machine. We, That's we what know, they do. We, of right. course, we understand they do promotions on these machines. But at the end of the day, you know, I mean, if you look, at, if I can tell you as a bookmaker, tell you as a bookmaker, if you read the headlines in the last in the last few weeks from bookmakers about how much, how little they're making out of sports betting and racing. It is a reality. It's a fiscal reality that they're going to turn to a product that de that definitively makes them money. But it's lazy. It's no, it's, it, to me, it's, 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 it's you can stick four machines in there and make money, Billy. But the point is, if, if you know, if I had a betting shop and I looked at the financials, would I put properties in my betting shop? Of course yes. you would. You, absolutely. Well, you couldn't uh, survive would you without them. Correct. Absolutely, you yes. couldn't survive without you couldn't them. Also, let, let's answer the question. Yes, absolutely. On, on the question that, that they're bringing up about the properties and the uh, margins and the bookmakers are fiddling them out, the answer is they don't need to. They don't need to break the law and risk imprisonment in the end. They're making the money as it is, about 97%. It's like Las Vegas. You go to Vegas and thousands of people, especially women, are pulling the, the, these levers and pressing these buttons. And they, they don't have their very high margins, um, 98, 97, 99, because the money keeps pouring but, in. But why I are we not attracting younger people to no, horse racing? No. Why are we spending that oh, time attracting that, people it, it's to, a, it's to, a, to, to machines? It's, it's a different because horse racing, you go horse racing and in, you get seven races in about three hours. And you can get the roulette wheel spins every 30 seconds, whatever it is. Less. So it is mm. in racing, we, well, we love it. The, the perambulation around you go 60 seconds of flat race, five exactly. seconds of flat race. So, but you meet people, you often get about 10 minutes of action at a horse race meeting. So you can see why, in this instant satisfaction era that we've got, that they demand their adrenaline pull of a bet and betting, you go there and you only get seven races to bet on in three hours. You can see why people uh, go look elsewhere. I think it's awful. We love horses. We love the horses parading around, the whole sort of majesty oh, of it. Oh, and the whole we, of the we understand what's going on. This is what always me. If, if you yeah. take away the, the, the machines and people turn around and look at the, the racing post in the mm. betting shop, do they understand what they're looking at? Mm. It's not easy for oh. somebody to understand racing. So they What happens in my local betting shop is mm. the papers are actually squeezed in the corner and you 
you've got to you've got to actually get <laughs> by the well, person. Well, you're so you won't buy one yourself. Yeah, you <laughs> I, was quite, I was quite amused today to see a Twitter war break out between Greg Wood of the Guardian, who's got plenty to say, no, but with the greatest respect. Well, he's he's a socialist, it real. It doesn't matter. It doesn't. It doesn't matter whether you're Guardian. From, it good. doesn't matter whether you're a Conservative or a Labour. He's yeah. got plenty to say on yeah, racing, yeah. and there's nothing. There's nothing unhealthy about that, no, John. No, I mean, no, I, I had agree, that out. I, I had that out with Alan Lee this week. Yeah, yeah. But the point of the matter is that Greg Wood had plenty to say. And Bruce Millington, for example, who put in his editorial today in the Racing Post mm -hmm. in his column that FOBTs essentially are great. Well, we know he's that. Right. The, he's with, right. with, with, but but is he the right person to be writing such about such such well, such they're, a product they're, they're, they're when his views. paper when yeah. his paper is effectively propped up by William Hill, Ladbrokes, Corals, and Betfred uh, on his in his betting apps what and his sponsorships? Is, I mean, is he the right person to be writing about it? How are you going to get an unbalanced view yeah. from the from the editor of Racing? Is he going to turn around and say, "I'm sorry, Mr. But Topping, yeah, I don't you, approve of your politics"? You're even worse. You are saying he's writing what he doesn't believe. That's what you're saying. Yes, I am. He doesn't believe absolutely. It's for commercial reasons, absolutely. He's coming out in favour of FOBTs. Absolutely. I just don't believe it. He's, 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 self, he's self-serving. No questions about it. 30 years ago, I was chief reporter of the Sporting Life, which was the main paper, apart from the Chronicle. And, of course, it relied totally on bookmaker advertising. Absolutely total. And we had one or two rousers of Ladbrokes and a chap called Burgess Daver and all that sort of thing pull the plug on the Sporting Life. And it really was big editorial conferences. And I always said, as a journalist, you want to give the story, morally it's correct, but we cannot risk the, the, the paper itself. And it was the same as that. We've used the argument before Thames TV. You remember Death on a Rock mm. and, the, yeah. and the, the, going around shooting the IRA in Gibraltar, Maggie Thatcher. In the end, it closed down Thames TV. And I said, what are, we, what are people doing putting their moral principles, righteous as they are, and they should be perhaps you can't jeopardise the mortgage. But Jeff's point is, because workers. he's in that position, he cannot necessarily write what he believes. Oh, he no, shouldn't be no, writing. No, no, but that's an awful thing to say. I think that's Jeff, Jeff's point. Well, really, everyone's entitled yeah, to opinion. Opinion. Think, It's not an awful no, thing to I'm, say. It's absolutely, it's I'm, absolutely no, You're true. saying he doesn't believe what he writes. I'm saying... I don't believe what he writes. Not for a second well, do I believe that Bruce Millington, with all this nonsense in there today, in that paper today... Yeah. Talking about, oh, when I drop my kids off to school, I pop into the betting so, shop, I put £20 in, and I get 97% yeah. of my money back. It's a load of... But there are people, people who do that. What's wrong with them? But who but who but on earth are you to do, say do, a man is lying? Do you, do you believe that Bruce Millington parks his car with his kids in the back, pops into the betting shop, I've, puts £20 why, in, why and gets £19.60p back? I, I never paid the properties I'm sorry, but he doesn't. He doesn't believe it for a second. I'll tell you what. It's what pays his wages. It's what pays his wages. Can I... I'll tell you what. Write that because he's amazing. I hate to say a man of honour, like when you say that, <laughs> you know straight away. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, was it Brutus is an honourable man? That's what they say. So once you say that, you're doomed. Any, you're doomed anyway. But in fairness, it's very unfair what you say about Bruce Miller. You may say his views are wrong. That's a different matter. But to say he actually doesn't believe what he writes. I think the really point is, John, if he wrote against it, what would happen? But anyway, let's right. go over to Tom. So if there's any more twitters. Um, yeah. Mark Rogers, uh, Rogerson says, um, as a betting shop worker, so it's first hand knowledge here, uh, not what the chaps are talking about over there, um, acknowledges that between years of 18 and 30, he just feels that nobody's interested in horse racing in that younger age group. Obviously, I'm the odd one out in this. Uh, TV set as you can see but um, certainly a point to be made there. Secondly and uh, bookies don't lay bets has come back to us and he said he literally asked the chap behind the counter can I have a £200 bet on this horse and it would not be allowed but the guy said you can have a £200 bet in the fob machine. Is this right and um, again um, the other point to make is you know whether we should be cu cutting down the amount of fob tees in the shops and it's Jamie Brownlow who brings up the point that maybe you should cut the maximum amount of fob tees allowed from four to two. Would that stop people playing them or would it just make arguments and cues and cues coming out of betting shops and you know more avid customers in, in betting shops we just don't know and it's yet to be decided but back to the panel on, on how they would decide that one. You'd have twice as many betting shops with half as many yeah. properties in each. That's yeah. ridiculous. Right. So yeah. point and and what they're talking about is cluster. That too many betting shops in the area. Well, they seem to forget there used to be over 16,000 betting shops. Now there's 8,500. So there's half the number of betting shops that there used to be. There is a cluster. But, but where are they placing them, John? Yes, but where, they where are they placing them? Where the public go. For some reason, <laughs> people go there. Where they they wouldn't open them there if the public didn't want them. So who are people 
people, do gooders and the Labour Party, Greg Wood and all these socialists in there, to tell people, oh, you can't go in a betting shop because there's two, one or two there and there's no, uh, no place for you to go and play your fob I, 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 I find it quite ironic, though, that they say they work in places where unemployment is very high and yes. they would lose jobs. Yeah. So who are the people that go in there? They must be unemployed. Well, you, you can say that. And, and we all pay. Uh, we saw Benefit Street on Channel 4. Fantastic television that is. You weren't on it, though, John. What? And where does some of that? And she was looking through one of the one of the birds, and it was looking through her lottery ticket, and whether she got this that, and the other. And we pay for that damn lottery ticket. So you know that that thing does rile you, does get you, does get you angry. But it is the will of the people they want to go. Who are politicians to deny a lawful a a enterprise going into a betting shop, having a bet, going on the because, faulties, because to what, deny what, it to uh, Jeff, simply, Jeff, because, simply because it's changed. John Jeff, yeah. let me ask you. Simply they, they, the they were saying that simply because the product in the betting shop. Jeff, let changed. me ask you. They said there was going to be a review, mm. yes. didn't yeah. they? Yes. What do you think the outcome? What I, do you think will be the outcome? I think. I think that uh, to be honest with you, I think that I think the major firms are rather over a barrel here. There, there, there's been so, there has been so much anti these machines in the in the press. Oh, that they, huge, to yeah. a certain extent, they are over a barrel. So there will be there will be concessions made to government. There just has to be. You can't have leaders of not only the prime minister but the leader of the opposition on the same page. Mm -hmm. And and Richard Glynn and Ralph Topping and and Hornby Ra Hornby Ray Stra Ra Rail Tracks turning around and saying, well, we're not going to do anything about this. They 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 have to make concessions to the government. So undoubtedly, it will impact on their profits and on the proliferation of betting shops. Yeah, but in fairness, David Cameron has certainly said there is a problem in the industry. We can always argue that. Let's see what the inquiry brings out, which they're having. I'm amazed that David Cameron wants to get it into As a Tory, he should be saying, free markets, people want to use them, let them go on. I, I'm outraged that the maximum payout is 200 quid. You go to Las Vegas, you can win a million quid on these machines. But they're not betting so, shops, though, George. No, they're not. No, they're they're not. They're not. And in the main part of right the casinos, next, they de license they, yeah. they have parts of their casinos that are defined sports books, yes. and part of their casinos. Right next to you, hear the shrieks and the whoops and the shrieking going on from the people <laughs> who are on the. No, of course, it all makes it. But it's interference with freedom. People like you, the do gooders, <laughs> we're doing horrible things, but, but it's for your own but good. But you and say, they always but you justify. Say it's about socialists, no, and I'm yeah. not a socialist. No, but if you're doing this for their I can't own be good. Both. No, no, but you're doing it for their own good. Well, cut down, you can't go into these betting shops, there's too many of them. Or no, because no we are, but you know where I'm coming from. But you know where I'm coming from. I'm coming from the point of view of British racing. Yes. That's yes. my passion. Yeah. My passion is not these machines. My yeah. passion is my passion is British racing. Well, I believe, yeah. I believe that if 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 the focus of these betting shops wasn't on these fob tees, if it was if it was lessened, if it was lessened the impact, the impact of British racing would become more. It's just I like any other it? it's just like any other shop. I tell you what, football, it's not a two man show, it's a three man show. Come on, just, come Billy, on, Billy, come on, Billy, man of reason, quickly. Well, there's there is going to have to be some concessions because it has got to yes. be serious. There will they have, have to, to do be. something. Yeah. But you know, reducing the number from four to two is nonsense. Yeah. You know, reducing the maximum payout, I think that's something they could look at. Mm. Um, we look at so a hundred quid, two quid. If you want to win big money, go and play in a casino. That's another problem. You talk about young people getting into racing, yeah? And, yeah. and my daughter's That's school, the most important say. thing. Young There's, people will not get into The school teaches the kids today, gambling is bad. Mm. You can't gamble. Horse racing is bad. When my daughter mentions horse racing at school, it's linked with gambling. It's bad. Mm -hmm. Don't get involved in horse racing, and it's it's not right. You know, so it's betting betting on a betting on a roulette table is is good. No, what he's no, saying is it's, it's linked to roulette. Is linked to okay. racing. That's but what one, he's saying. We're going to have to, be, have to both both sides. Up, one point I would make: both sides. Both sides seconds. have been far have exaggerated the problem greatly. I mean, both sides have. You know, the the the, the, the major concerns of advertised shop closures and staff losses, and the and the people against them have advocated as the crack cocaine.